Hey guys. Hi guys, welcome back to Violating <laughs> Community Guidelines with Sarah and, and Ri oh. <laughs> <laughs> with Sarah and Brittany. There we go. Guys, it's the long awaited episode. Today we're gonna be talking about the rise and fall of Vine. Of Vine, dude. Vine. Do we miss her? Not really. I th I mean, I used to really miss her, but I think, like, you know, it's like when someone dies and they've been gone for, like, five years, you're like, let you're, it go. And you're like, they actually were kind of a bad person. Yeah, kind of. I mean, like, Vine, no, I do miss Vine, but I'm just like, I don't know, TikTok and, like, other platforms are doing it better, I feel like. Oh, 100%. I think Vine was um, the the childlike predecessor to the beast that is TikTok. Yeah. People are, I'm going to speak personally. I'm nostalgic for the era of Vine. Yeah. Of the music <coughs> that was happening at the time, the fashion of the time. I was in high school. It was like peak angst. Vines were a way to like relate to people. Yeah. Like, Have you seen this Vine? Because mm -hmm. it was so much less content than TikTok. Yeah. Because I remember on Vine, like, you know, the endless scrolling with TikTok. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like that on Vine. No. You would eventually run out of videos to watch. Yeah, like, I don't think, I don't really look at the, um, like, the different pages on, like, TikTok and, like, how it's divided. I never I just do. go to the For You page mm -hmm. and I scroll it. But with Vine, there was, like, different categories, like, weird or comedy or yeah. science. Yeah. Which Beauty. is crazy. Mm -hmm. Science. <laughs> Who's making <laughs> fucking six-second science videos? Hank Green. Hank Green. <laughs> Hank Green wasn't on Vine. He wasn't on Vine? No. Uh, wait, I'm going to look at Vine categories. I should really know this. Yeah, you can't recite them from memory? No, I can't. No, Vine categories. <laughs> <laughs> Vine platform categories. There was music, nature, comedy, and more. Um, this is an article from 2013, so I don't even think that that's... Yeah, no. There were... And then what was the gold star one? Featured? Popular Now. Popular Now. And On The Rise. Oh, dude, I um, whenever I got on the Popular Now or like On The Rise page, dude, um, on Vine, when your Vine started to blow up, a little uh, flame appeared right next to the numbers. Uh -huh. And uh, it meant like it was on the uh, popular, uh, popular Now page or On The Rise page. It was really invigorating. I also was um, a featured, the featured Viner of the Month, like one October. <gasps> mm-hmm. And it was just my content pushed to the top. But it was towards the end That's of Vine. So slow. I know. It was towards the end of Vine, so it didn't really like help my numbers. But I was like, finally. For those who didn't know, Sarah used to be a Viner. I used to be a Viner. I was nominated for Viner of the Year last one ever at the Shorty Awards. Um, and then I made the final round. Yeah. I used to be a comedy Viner. I did like zoom ins on my face, which are very millennial, but I feel like I've stopped doing those. But it wasn't you know, millennial at the time because millennials were the youngest generation. Yeah, like some of I used to bitch about being a waitress. Some of you are going to like put two and two together. I've literally gone on a date with someone where I told them I was a viner and then I told them to vine and they were like, wait, <laughs> wait, wait. And I'm like, yeah, I used to be blonde and have sperm eyebrows. <laughs> but like I would bitch about like, and wait, be straight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, and be in a sorority, uh, but I like bitch about waitressing shit. Like, um, people would ask stupid questions at restaurants. Like, excuse me, what's Novaki cranberry? And, <laughs> and I said uh, Jaeger and fucking milk. <laughs> or like, um, oh, there's, there's like it's a dinner rush and the restaurant's full, but we want to be seated immediately. Uh, done and done. Let me pull the table out of my ass. That was a good one. I remember that one. Mm -hmm. So those are that was my series, and that's how I blew up originally on the internet. Um, it's from like nine years ago, guys. Can you believe that? I know I'm an old fuckwad at this point. I mean, I whisper that, but I don't. You know, <laughs> I, I hope you don't hear me when I say that. I'm driving you yeah. to this podcast recording. Old fuckwad. <laughs> What's that? I'm just singing along to the song. Yeah, I just love the song. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's quiet in here. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> um, yeah, I. Uh, that happens to me too, and people are like. You're, wait, the meme? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you. I'm uh, like, it's my face, man. Yeah. Like, I don't know why that doesn't connect for a lot of people. What's crazy is that that was also like just three years ago. Oh, dude, when people come up and say, I grew up watching you. No, you didn't, by the yeah. way. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Someone at our live show said that yeah. too. Yeah, we, we do. I, or when I meet people in person and they're like, it's really, really sweet, like mm -hmm. what they say to me. And it it really sticks with me. And for multiple reasons, because mm -hmm. mainly it's like, you know, you got me through the pandemic, like you were 
I some I looked forward to coming home and watching you. You were like escapism, and that's such a full circle thing because I had creators that I turn to like yeah. that you know growing up and and even still now like uh, the concept of a comfort creator and to be that for someone is insane but they'll say it in a way that's like i grew up watching you yeah I'm like i have been on the internet for maybe two and a half years <laughs> yes. like they're genuinely your, they're your neighbor <laughs> literally <laughs> yes. like i went viral august of 2019 it's we're almost coming up on three years mm-hmm. that's insane that is insane but I- it's insane too because people the passage of time covid time uh-huh fucked with people i know yeah it feel like i feel like it's only been like a year i know when people like when you think about it if at the beginning of or in 2019 when i started to go viral on tiktok if they were 15 they're starting their freshman year of co- college now yeah so I guess in a sense they did grow up with me, but it's like don't say that to me. I know <laughs> grow up sounds like they went you like went through puberty with them. Yeah, that's something you say to like Jenna Marbles. Yeah, exactly. Because she's been on the internet for fifteen years. Mm-hmm. But it's it's a weird thing, and um, it's even weirder, I guess, for people to not recognize you until you have to be like, yeah, this is what I used to do. Yeah, well, I mean, like whenever I show pictures of like how I used to look, like think of the most basic blonde sorority person you've ever seen in your entire life. And then they look at me now and they're like, what does it even look like you? And I'm like... I just dyed my hair, man. Yeah, I'm like, I'm just a brunette and about 30 pounds heavier. <laughs> Would you believe that that happens when, you know, over the course of like fucking seven yeah. years? Yeah. They don't tell you that about being gay. <laughs> Gain 30 you pounds. You get 30 pounds heavier. <laughs> oh. And have to dye your hair? <laughs> I know. Actually, that, I would say that dyeing the hair is pretty accurate for is. gay people. What is... Can you explain the phenomenon of bleaching your hair? It's a gay crisis. I mean, I don't, I haven't dyed my hair in a year and a half, so this is my natural hair color, but I mean, I think like, um, you know, gay people like to dye their hair because they want to be different, because they are different, and I feel like they want their aesthetic to match like how they are Yeah. on the inside. I've always, I think maybe I'm, with gay men, it's always like, oh, if it's bleach blonde, you know, it's a little grown out, it's a little yellow, they haven't really taken care of it, it's like, oh, they're going through something. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that... I guess women do it too, where it's like something's wrong in my life. I need to dye my hair. Well, I think it's just like the most immediate change you yeah. can have happen to your body. Yes. Because I mean, you can go on a fitness journey, but that's not going to be overnight. Yeah. If you have a, a mental break, you can go to CVS and get like a box of hair dye. You can get a plastic bowl <laughs> and some fucking bleach. Yes. Guarantee. <laughs> exactly. But let's talk a little bit about Vine. Uh, Vine is an American mobile based short form video hosting service app. That allows its Mouthful. users, I know, users to create, upload, and share looping video clips spanning <coughs> up to six seconds in duration. Um, Stanley wrote, which is insane to think about. Yeah, you had six seconds to deliver a fucking joke. That is, and you did it. Yeah, it yeah. was. It's actually kind of crazy. Like people were like, "Is it weird moving from to like from Vine to like TikTok or larger platforms?" I wouldn't say it's. No, I wouldn't say it's crazy. At least you have, you have more time to create. That yeah. was the most stressful. Like to get a fucking joke out in six seconds. Well, and you were one of the people that, tr- like, delivered a joke. Yeah. A lot of it was, I mean, this was the era of, to bring up the Paul brothers again, just doing the most insane shit you've ever seen in yeah. six seconds. I light my pool on fire and jump over it in a motorcycle. What? Yeah. How did it get to that point? I know. It's crazy that, like, I was also, I didn't do that, but I also still had, a like, a large success. Like, they would have to, like, set a car on fire, and I'd be like, every kiss begins with K. Actually, every kiss begins with consent. It's a good one. And then people will be like, oh, my God, that is equally as entertaining as yeah. someone setting their car on fire. Yeah. That is crazy how that works. Yeah. And it's also the different audiences mm-hmm. on the app. Vine was, I feel like, the first time in YouTube history other than – or not <laughs> – okay. <laughs> you get it. Vine was the first time in internet history other than YouTube mm-hmm. where everyone was on it. Yeah. Every young person. Mm-hmm. Like, straight men – women like everyone from every background was like oh i found a vine that i like yeah youtube was still kind of i mean there was like the british invasion and all that Uh and i feel like youtube was very selective with who they put on featured videos and all Mm -hmm. that but and and now i mean that laid the groundwork for tiktok to be what it is now where there's literally something for everyone and that's their tagline something like that i think that that's cool you know everyone has a good memory of vine Mm mm-hmm which is wild. Yeah. 
So. Well, I think it's just like it was the first of its kind where like YouTube mm-hmm. is video content, but you have to really like dedicate a portion of your life to like making that content. Yeah. To take out your phone and film something for six seconds is just like in- Instagram, but moving. And everyone yeah. is on Instagram. Yeah. So that's what Vine was. Yeah. And I, um, I used to want to be a Vine star so bad. Yeah. In high school, I was like, I'm going to be famous. <laughs> and I made some Vines that were just like me making noises. Yeah. Not far off from what i do today to Uh be completely honest like just shorter version and i was skinnier yeah and it's weird to think like trying to fit your whole personality into six seconds it's crazy what you have to share with the world is it's wild Mm -hmm. and people did it yeah i think it's why it worked for me is that i like setups and punchlines um i imagine if it's your personality it would be hard to like really squeeze into six seconds yeah because people your personality they're getting a sense of you but people like Liza Koshy did it. Yeah. Oh, well, she was. She is funny. She is funny, mm-hmm. but it's cringe to look back at that time. Uh, what I was getting to earlier is yeah. that Vine was a type of humor. Yeah. That short. <laughs> you know? Free Shavaka do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just like that short, it just has to be something quotable and move on. Mm-hmm. And I think people like Nick Coletti did it in a way that's like it introduced this surrealism aspect. Yeah. Of like. I don't know, a lot of the shit he did, if these walls could talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Carrots. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> like, there was something for everyone. And I think that that sort of humor has evolved mm-hmm. and branched off. Yeah. So it's cool to be able to trace it back, but it's so cringe. It's mm-hmm. so cringe. Just before we started filming, I was watching a cringy Vine compilation on YouTube and Sarah, well, let me play it. But you were laughing so genuinely, like, <laughs> hard. <laughs> Is. Okay, but do you remember that guy that would come on and be like, "I just stole a kiss. What are you going to do about it?" Yeah. I <laughs> oh my god! Look at that smile. Show me that smile. Oh, see, there it is. There it is. Oh my god! <laughs> I have to laugh. It's so good. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, yeah. I mean, I think it's in the post-post irony stage you keep talking about. Yeah. Like if you just went on TikTok right now and posted, "I just stole a kiss. <laughs> what are you going to do about <laughs> it?" Oh, because yeah, so. it'd be like I remember that vine that's so referential yes um, but now it's funny because it's ir- yeah yeah but vine was founded in June of 2012 American microblogging website Twitter acquired it in October of 2012 before its official release on January 24 2013 Videos published on Vine's social network could also be shared on different social networking platforms, such as Facebook and Twitter. The Vine now let me share this Vine to Facebook so my <laughs> grandma can look at it. Dude, it's like how there's an option to share on Pornhub. Imagine like watching like a gangbang and you're like, I really want to post this on my public you know Twitter account. You know who needs account. to see this? All my cousins. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My Aunt Wendy. <laughs> My family needs to know what I'm about. Yeah. Um, the Vine app was also used to try to browse videos along with a group of videos that were uploaded by theme and hoping that the users could trend videos. Did you, looking back, do you think that that was successful as a platform? Yeah. To try to group content like that? Honestly, yeah. And then like towards the end of Vine's uh, days, they added comedy and then also comedy. And it was just like, because um, a bunch of like Vine comedians were like, hey, I feel like you only press like push the lele pawn stuff to the top of the comedy yeah. page and so like the uh, also comedy page became like alt and like mm. uh more inclusive sort of thing so i think it instead did of just people hurting themselves yeah, yeah 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 there was no content warning on those either did pe- did you see when someone actually get hurt i mean yeah it was people like like cars hitting people and like lele pawns smacking her head into shit <laughs> falling off of stuff and like getting hurt yeah jake paul jumping over a pool f- on fire in a motorcycle like that should have had a content warning mm-hmm. well it was the, like the very early days of the internet it was the wild west <laughs> it was five years ago it, very early it was. days yes that's act- why did you say that <laughs> yeah. it wasn't it was six years ago 2014 oh no i'm thinking about when vine ended vine ended in 2016 2017 six years ago or five or six years ago yeah i was not on vine in 2017 it was over by that point yeah it, it ended was right after i graduated high school 20 20- 15 so it ended in 2016 no it ended in 2017 because i remember um they announced it i because i got a job fresh out of college and then one month into that job they announced that vine was shutting down yeah and so then that halloween i showed up as vine is dead so yeah it ended in uh (laughs) january 20 it was personal (laughs) yeah um yeah it ended in january of 2017 or like february zang Mm mm-hmm 
Hey guys, it's Brittany. Thanks for listening. If you made it this far, I got a little ad read for you. So just tune in, sit back, relax. Here we go. For all of your summer travels, whether you're going abroad or staying domestic and want to immerse yourself in the culture, now is the perfect time to start Babbel. Babbel is the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. Thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons, there's still time to learn a new language before you reach your destination. I'm going to Spain this summer. I speak Spanish, but sometimes it's really nice to brush up on some of that vocab you might be missing, some of the, the grammar, syntax, all that sort of good stuff. With Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson, so you can start having real-life conversations in a new language in as little as three weeks. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 150 language experts. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective, and with Babbel you can choose from 14 different languages, including, but not limited to, Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent, which in my experience is the best part because you can speak another language all day, but if you got that nasty American accent, they're going to clock you, girl. There's so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes, which are really beneficial. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. What are your excuses, people? Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, save up to 60% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash VCG. <coughs> That's babbel.com slash VCG. How many times do I have to say it? Up to 60% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. So Vine competed with other social media services such as Instagram and Feed. Now what the fuck is Feed <laughs> with a PH? <laughs> Videos of people being force fed. <laughs> <laughs> feed. <laughs> just people feeding catfish. <laughs> yes. You like put a quarter in one of those fish feeding machines and you just. <laughs> yes. Different feeding videos. Yeah. By December of 2015, Vine had over 200 million active users. That's wild. I know. On October 27, 2016, Twitter announced that it would disable all uploads, but this viewing and download c will continue to work. Yeah, that's when Vine died. Everyone freaked the fuck out. Yeah, it felt like the world was ending. Mm -hmm. It's like how people know where they were when Michael Jackson died. Uh, everyone knows where they were when like Vine. Everyone announced. knows where you were when Michael Jackson died because you've said it a few times. Losing my virginity. So for any new listeners, um, the reason why the day I lost my virginity is so special is it be is because the day Michael Jackson died. I wouldn't say that it I didn't like that he died, but like now everyone remembers where they were when Michael Jackson died, so it makes it like everyone also knows where I w like they were when I was getting fucked for the first time. Um, so circling back to Vine, um, on Jan never gets old. <laughs> it does I feel like it does? But everyone's just on January twenty twenty seventeen. Twitter launched an uh, Internet Archive of all Vine videos that had ever been published. The archive was officially dis uh, discontinued in April twenty nineteen. I didn't know that happened. Oh, you know it's so crazy. Like charging your old phones, and you can see yes. like Vine is still on there, you and still like scroll through it. The for you page is like not for you. Oh wow, oh. the popular page is like frozen in time. That's like a uh, what's it called? Time capsule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like video. Do you remember this guy? Yes, I do. You mean Nathan? Nathan. I f do you know what yeah, Nathan is? A it's Pinao. Sixty nine cents. Uh, you know what that means? I don't have enough money for chicken nugget. So his name is Nathan. We actually went to the Shorty Awards together, and he's, I think he's doing AIDS research now. You're kidding. No. I love him. Mm -hmm. But yeah. He was my favorite Viner. I hit on him um, in college, and he was like, I don't think you understand. I'm gay. And then I realized later in my life, I'm gay. So yeah. I caught it from him. Happy Pride Month, by the way. Happy Pride Month, Nathan. Yeah. <laughs> but no, me and Nathan still uh, follow each other on Instagram. Does he? So he doesn't do anything social media. Um, no, he's just like a fun, you know, nice guy now. I loved him. I know so much. He is. I so loved Marcus Johns too before he was a freak out Christian. Yeah, there's something weird about like I kind of want to do a podcast episode on like when a creator pivots. Christian influencers, dude. Or not even them, just like when a creator pivots to Christianity, because we could talk about like a bunch of people. There's so many people. Because it's like a day and night shift with yeah. their shit. It's so crazy. And you lose a lot of the audience yeah that way when you become a religious zealot when people followed you because you're funny yeah that's wild i know that is really crazy and then he like got married and was like kind of misogynistic and like really limiting over his wife that doesn't sound like christian men 
A Christian <laughs> man? Being misogynistic? No. Putting generals on his wife? <laughs> I don't know about that. Him, like tying an apron around her, like, yeah. you're gonna cook for me. Yeah, let me tell you about okay. the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Wait a minute, in December of 2017, I was about to take my shirt off. I don't Why? know. I don't know, it got hot. Why? It got hot. I was literally, like, it was just like a, oh my God. <laughs> I don't know. Are you it, wearing a bra? No, of course not. <laughs> of course not. Oh, wow. Oh, sorry, I just went to go like this, and I was like, why is that a, not a good oh, thing? Oh, shit, can't do that. So in December of 2017, co-founder <laughs> Dom Hoffman announced that he was beginning to work on Vine's successor, Byte, which he said was not affiliated with Twitter, and it flopped. You're just, like, stumbling through a paragraph, just nipples out. <laughs> it, was, it was like a, <laughs> Hannah has to put, a, like, bars over my chest, and you're huh? just, like, not saying anything. <laughs> Until I look up, and I'm like, It's like my skin quarters. Oh. Um... So the history of Vine. Stop looking at your phone. Sorry. We're recording. Um, so the history of Vine <laughs> was founded by Dom Hoffman, Russ, and I uh, can't say his last name, and Colin Kroll in June of 2012. The company was acquired by Twitter in October of 2012 for reported $30 million, but this uh, number has not been confirmed. Dude, they bought Vine for $30 million. That is crazy. That's so cheap. That seems like not a lot. Maybe mm-hmm. that's not accurate. I think three million dollars in 2017 is a billion dollars in 2022. Inflation. You ever tried to buy a house? Yeah. Google it. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Um, Vine launched on January 24, 2013, as a free app for iOS devices. On April 9, 2013, Vine became the most downloaded free app. (gasps) I didn't even think about that. I couldn't watch Vine. I had an Android in high school. Why? Because my family's an Android family. And my dad was like, if you're going to be on our phone plan and you want a phone, it's going to gonna be a Galaxy. And uh-huh. I was like, please, just please, please, <laughs> anything, anything. Yeah. And then I got an iPod Touch for Christmas. That's how I used to watch Vines. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God, dude. I'm going to go home and actually, I don't know where my iPod Touch is. You're going to fly home to Texas. I'm going to fly home, or say, Florida. give me my iPod Touch, <laughs> charge it. You know that noise it used to make? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, I'm thinking of an iPod. So I wouldn't, wasn't watching Vine on that. Never, yeah, never mind. We're no, but that's a satisfying noise. Yes. No, my iPod Touch, it had a camera. It mm. was luxury, bitch. It yeah. had a front camera. I used to take selfies. <laughs> They're so grainy and bad yeah. and greasy. I'm going to go home and, and do that, and I'm going to live my fantasy. Then do it. Post on the uh, post on Vine. Um, <laughs> um, on May 1st, 2014, Vine launched the web version of the service to explore videos. And then in July of 2014, Vine updated its app with a new loop count, meaning every time someone watches a Vine, a number on top of the video will appear showing how many times it was viewed. Ultimately useless. Mm-hmm. I because have, that wasn't monetized. That is true. But I had a couple of Vine. Well, I had like a billions of views at a certain point. That's wild. Yeah, that was. And it meant nothing. Wait, no. You weren't making money. That might be a straight up lie. I have like hundreds of millions of views. I don't know if I ever got to a billion. You don't put your mouth on the mic. We just got a new studio. Truth, I thought I had to do it. Sorry. People, other people use this. Yeah, that's why there's a cover. That's why my pants are off. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I've been farting for the last <laughs> yes. 45 minutes. Marking my territory. <laughs> Um, so the loop count also includes views from vines that are embedded onto other websites. Fun! Um, on October 14, 2014, an Xbox One version was released, allowing Xbox Xbox Live members to watch the looping videos. God, that's so fun. Mm, scrolling through my Xbox, <laughs> watching vines. <laughs> Uh, so Racy released within the first week of this launch, pornographic video clips r- reportedly <laughs> yes! Yes! Uh, began appearing on the service. Vine porn, vine porn. <laughs> Six seconds of Oi. penetration. Yeah, no, it's just simply not enough. Yeah, it's just the dick entering the hole, and then you're oh, like, and then it's just dude. a looping. So it looks like it's going in and out. Well, actually, I feel like that could really help. You know what? That's not that bad. It's just a gif. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a gif, a porn gif. Yeah, <laughs> yes. just with audio. <laughs> Um, it prompted Gawker to label the app America's hottest new porn search engine Holy in the shit. article on January 27th. What was the previous America's hottest porn search engine? Google? Uh, <laughs> Bing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. If Bing just pivoted to porn. Could have been great. Yeah, I know. It'd be bong or bang. No, it'd be bang. Bang. Yeah, bang. That's good. Mm-hmm. Bang.gov. <laughs> Bang.edu. <laughs> On the following day, a sexually explicit video clip titled Dildo Play was accidentally featured as an editor's pick. It's just someone <laughs> Googling or drawing googly eyes on dildos. Yeah, yeah. Just like literally playing with them. Uh, but the editor picked him. Um, 
on every Vine user's news feed page for their drawing criticism and mockeries from the tech news blogosphere. If anything, it's just a mistake because the app is so new. Yeah. I don't remember this. You don't remember Dildo Play? Nope. <laughs> wow. Okay, I, yeah, I guess you are young. <laughs> <laughs> I said, why are they playing with those purple hot dogs? Do you remember Astrog? No. <laughs> it you... doesn't exist yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, later the same day, a Twitter spokesperson issued an apology <clears throat> explaining that a human error resulted in a video with adult content making one of the videos in editor's pics. Maybe the editor just also liked it. And upon realizing this mistake, we removed the video immediately. Boo. You don't remember this at all? I don't remember this at all. <laughs> you don't remember I don't. was 14. Yeah. I'm not like, do you hear what happened with the porn on <laughs> the Twitter new thing Vine? You were literally reading fan fiction on Tumblr. Yeah, I was reading about wee-wees entering woo-woos. You weren't looking. I mean, I guess that maybe that is different. Um, yeah, I didn't start watching porn until I was in college. Yeah. It freaked me out. Being in a Christian household, I was like, I'm going to put that on my <laughs> my dad's Wi-Fi network. I remember, like, my brother got in trouble one time because my dad, like, programs, like, big machines. And so my brother stupidly, like, watched porn in, like, our house. My dad immediately knew. And he watched, like, 24 hours of porn, Mm -hmm. like, in the period of, like, two weeks. And my dad's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Are you, like, studying with it on in the background? (laughs) There's no way. It's your white noise is just, like, moaning. (laughs) (laughs) The grapefruit technique is your ASMR. Oh, Oh, ew. That's that's a lot to think of. Mm Mm-hmm. So while uploading pornography is not prohib- prohibited by Twitter's guidelines, several tags containing explicitly sexually explicit terms were blocked as a result, and the minimum age limit for the iPhone app was raised from 12 to 17 to comply with Apple's iTunes ter- terms of service. Yeah, Twitter is the place to go for porn, I feel like. Which is insane, because I feel like Twitter has such strict community guidelines. Yeah, you can't tell a politician to kill themselves. But, but you, you can, can upload... Hole. You can reply to a politician's tweet with, with a gaping hole gift. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> with someone getting just their shit rocked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is that is dystopian. Just right beneath like Biden's tweet is like someone cum farting. And that's allowed, but you know, you can't say like kill yourself to redact. Ted Cruz? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's my right. Yeah. <laughs> um Closure. So on October 27, 2016, Twitter announced via a post on Medium that they would be shutting down Vine. In the statement, Twitter and Vine assured content creators that the shutdown would come in the coming months so that creators would be able to access and download their Vines. That was a huge thing. Everyone, every Viner I knew, like, just freaked out and, like, downloaded their Vines and then started uploading them to YouTube. Um, I mean, but trying to get a following, like, move a following is very hard, even mm-hmm. when the app is shutting down. I know, like, people on TikTok probably panicked a couple times, like, a couple mm-hmm. years ago, where they're like, hey, follow me on Instagram. Yeah, the, like, Trump ban. People were yeah. literally like, guys, please, please follow me on Instagram and YouTube and, like, please stick with me and mm-hmm. I love you so much and thank you for everything. It literally was, like, so scary. Yeah. Ah! Because you spent so much time accumulating mm-hmm. and curating all of your work and organizing it into playlists and da da da, and you have ten million followers and all that could just go away. I know it's, it's crazy. Freaky. I like um, I have this like thing. Whenever someone like comments on my TikTok or like YouTube, like I'm unfollowing you. Like it literally means nothing because I've literally lost eight hundred seventy five thousand followers in one day. Mm-hmm. So if I lose you because you don't like something I said, I've had worse. You know. Period. Your philosophy on life, it could always get worse. Dude, everything could, I've done worse for less. Yeah. Like, that is what I say to, like, literally everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, like, you win some, you lose most. Like, that's that's my philosophy on life. It's accurate. But, yeah, I remember, um, so I think what someone who used to work at Vine told me is that, like, t- um, Twitter, when they bought Vine, they bought it in, like, they Twitter originally was trying to buy Instagram, and so Facebook bought Instagram, and I guess, like, a move, like, they were reeling from that, that Instagram didn't go with Twitter. So they were looking for the next big thing to, like, you know, say fuck you to Instagram and Facebook. So they bought Vine, and then they, really like, never really, like, monetized the platform and eventually, like, screwed the entire platform and themselves. Do you think that was the downfall? Yeah. They never monetized the platform, because they could have put ads between, you know, like, how Instagram does it, but they just, like, Twitter did not care about Vine. Truthfully. But yeah, in the statement, it says nothing. If I'm talking too much, you know. Okay. 
Um, nothing. The statement says nothing is happening onto the app's websites or your vines today. We value you, your vines. Liar. Yeah, and you're going to do this the right way. Um, you'll be able to access and download your vines. We'll be keeping the website online because we think it's important to still be able to watch all the incredible vines that you've made. You can't do that today. No, you, you can't. If you click on a link to a vine, it says, oops, this doesn't exist. It's so depressing. You will be notified before we make any changes to the app or website. We'll be working closely with creators to make sure your questions are answered, and we will work hard to do it the right way. We'll be sharing more details on this vlog in our Twitter account. Dude, Vine was so small too. Mm -hmm. Like it felt so larger than life. Compare that to TikTok nowadays where it's like, what, a billion users? Yeah. If they sh said we're shutting down TikTok, save all your videos, we can't help you. Yeah. There would be a riot. I know. It's crazy like they cut vine and like they literally fired like eight percent of their staff like twitter staff when this happened and then they cleared out the entire like vine floor it was really sad but i don't know why they cut vine first if twitter was losing money there was also much smaller apps that they own like periscope mm -hmm. i don't know if that's still around i don't know well probably not because you can go live on every app now. yeah exactly so it's, like it's um obsolete they could have just monetized the fucking platform yeah. you know and it, well, but, and in that same vein, I wanted to talk about monetization on mm -hmm. on Vine because it came from the kind of the first ever influencer marketing. Yeah, where people like Brittany Furlan mm -hmm. and R.I.P. <laughs> she's still alive. She's just married to Tommy Lee, um, <laughs> which is wild, by the way. All right, all right, Lee. All right, Tommy Lee. Okay. I have to diarrhea again. <laughs> Did you do it earlier? No, I haven't left this room. So what do you mean again? <laughs> what do you mean again? <laughs> it's just like pulling. Don't look under this chair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Brittany Furlan, <laughs> King Batch, um, Amanda. The poor? Yes. No, no, no. no, no. Amanda, Amanda the Playboy <laughs> Bunny. Stop. Not Amanda. Amanda Cerny. <laughs> Amanda Cerny. Fucking um, Peaks. Oh, yeah. Fuck Peaks. Fuck Peaks. I fucking hate Peaks. Who was Rudy Mancuso? Mm -hmm. All those people that started selling out to Badu? Yeah. The dating app? Wait. Major Vine stars. 2015. You had Nash Greer. Dude, Mad Con! We need to do an episode on Mad Con! Holy shit! I, I want to do Mad Con, but I also I feel like there won't be enough. I want to. Oh, there is. I'll take the lead on Mad Con. I want to group it with Tanacon. Okay. Maybe I want like to do internet like, conventions. Yeah, like weird, like very niche, like internet conventions. Okay. You know, not just like cosplay in general, but like a specific like fan group. I could talk about MadCon for a whole episode though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I used to read MadCon fan fiction. Really? Yeah. Why? I used to read Jack Linsky fan fiction. Did you hit your head? <laughs> I was dropped. <laughs> That's that big dent on the side of your head. Yeah. <laughs> I was dropped smack on my forehead and it smoothed it out. <laughs> Stunted the hair growth right there too. Wait, I want to look at like some Carter Reynolds. Was he part of MadCon? Carter Reynolds. Why does that sound familiar? We have um, Lance Two Ten. Yes, Ew. Carter Reynolds. Lance Two Ten. <laughs> Holy shit, he's, he fucking hates his grandma. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, he like, woke up every day and was like, "How can I disrespect my grandmother?" <laughs> but you know, like I've kind of like I understand that, you know, hating your grandma. Yeah, he would like come up behind <laughs> her with an air horn, yeah. <laughs> smear fake shit on her hands, hit her, hit her, yeah. <laughs> D Storm Power, oh shit. David Lopez, Jack and Jack is that? That's Jack Galinsky and Jack Johnson. Wait, which did you write fan fiction about the small blonde one? No. Or the big tall one? I read it about the big tall one. Oh. He dated Madison Beer. Oh, really? They yes. dated? Oh sh What about him is cute to you? He's hot. <laughs> Jack Galinsky. He's just like super hot. Matthew S. <laughs> dude, dude, I went to Stagecoach <laughs> a few <laughs> weeks ago. Yeah. With Taylor, my bestie, and we're sitting there watching uh, Carrie Underwood. Yeah. And we're having the time of our lives, whatever. We look over, and Taylor goes, dude, he was on Vine. And I'm like, what? And I look over, and it's fucking Matthew Espinoza. Oh, shit. And I was like, I forgot you existed, dude. Yeah. And I, I lost my fucking mind. We were giggling <laughs> like little girls. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, because that unlocked a memory in my mind of like this whole era. Yeah. Matthew Espinosa, Nash Greer, Hayes Greer, 
Um, Cameron Dallas. Uh huh. Wild. Okay, Lost my, my mind. I forgot that. Cola Brandt. Oh, dude. <gasps> Cola Brandt has pivoted to, like, we were just talking Christian. about. Yeah, Christian. Yeah, Christian influencers. He's, like, so fucking cringe. Wait, wait, wait. I have to look up the famous Cola Brandt tweet. What is it? Cola Brandt virginity tweet. Just lost my virginity. Yeah, Hell yeah. Yeah. yeah um, he tweeted one time, no longer a virgin. And then the hundred emoji, hashtag marriage rocks. That literally changed the course of the internet. That people did not know what to do with that. I mean, but here's the thing. I I always talk about when I lost my virginity. Yeah. Michael Jackson, when he died. But when you're like a Christian man. Yeah. And that's something so. I lost my virginity at church camp. <laughs> <laughs> on a gravel path. I always forget that little tidbit of the story. I know. So anytime I think about it, that moment, I have a sense memory of rocks on my back. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it was so... It like keeps getting worse. Painful. Why did I do that? Why was it like out in nature? Because we were at church camp because you couldn't go indoors with a boy oh. or else you're going to have sex. Little did they know it was outside where you had sex with boys. Did they know you had mm -hmm. ants in your gooch yeah and then he went to lsu and i didn't so let's go back to cola you know else went to lsu addison ray addison ray had addison ray made the lsu dance team we have we would not have addison ray today yeah mm -hmm. she'd be all tied up in her dance yeah mm -hmm. Dang. um curtis lapore oh yeah 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 curtis ew fucking insane creepo i know so many of these people are just like well, I hate saying this because it's like, I know we're all human. We all have our, our faults, but like bad people. Well, I mean, I think it's totally fine. He's a, he's a predator. He's an R word. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's like, these are majority bad people. You got uh, Thomas Sanders. Thomas Sanders, the theater kid we needed. <laughs> yeah. The theater kid who stood up. The thing. Okay. So Thomas Sanders, nice guy. But what's crazy to think about is that like he was a theater kid, but he was also like 30 like at like high schools all the time filming he's very much like a jason earls where like <laughs> and i love jason earls like every single time you find out how old they are you're like should you be around high schoolers <laughs> i love him yeah he's 31 Ew. <laughs> no i mean like if you're if i'm making sketches if i started making sketches in earnest about like how waking up for high school <laughs> at 8 a.m when your homework is <laughs> due at 11 59 when mom makes you wake up and it's like <laughs> you clearly don't live with your mother that's brent rivera too dude yeah y'all said alex james which i liked he is making a comeback yeah on tiktok, on TikTok. so we got cameron dallas we just talked about logan paul here's the um, thing i used to in the beginning you know the creation of the universe no i used to think that logan paul was funny and really? then he started to collab with people and it got like super cheesy but then he realized like the, you know these get followers and like so it just got like so cheesy yeah but I, I i remember following him in the beginning and thinking he is funny but then he got so violently unfunny just like is it like drunk on power sort of thing? Oh, definitely. He was creating an empire. Uh huh. That the likes of which we had never seen before from a social media star. I could have sworn that the Paul brothers had like a documentary or something where their parents put a lot of pressure on them. Yeah. So I think like yeah, he was drunk with power because I remember following him when he was, was still that Shane Dawson's fucking video inside the mind of Jake Paul. Oh yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah. Um. Then you have Jerry Perp drank. Yeah, I remember all these people. Josh Peck. Josh Peck, what the fuck? I remember, like, being so happy the first time I saw him on social media, and then I was like, oh. Yeah. It's kind of sad. It's kind of like when people just don't let something go. Yeah. You know, like, when you see, like, TikTok. I think we talked about this. Like, yeah, we did. Um, but, like, people on The Office on TikTok, like, who just are, like, embodying their office character. Yeah. And you're like, okay. You can be some. You yeah, can do other stuff. you can be just an actor. Yeah, you can just make jokes and funny stuff. Yeah, just leaning into being Josh from Drake and Josh is like, oh, yeah. Um, that <laughs> peaks, I think Brandon Colvillo and some of those other people who the crux of their comedy was like misogyny and uh -huh. like, um, literally like sexual assault jokes. Um, I don't remember what Brandon Calvillo posted. I never followed him. It literally was the type of humor of like, do you remember that dude who used to pretend like he was a Latin 
fitness instructor. I'm not sure, no. And he would, like, these videos, they were Instagram skits. They were Viners. These are all Viners that eventually moved to Instagram and yeah. YouTube and diversified whatever. And it would literally be skits of, like, I'm your fitness instructor. But he would, and the girl would be, like, no, you're not. Yeah. And he was, like, oh, I'm the fill-in. Da-da-da. And she's, like, okay. And then he would just be really, like, r word to her like, uh-huh. like really rapey towards her like be up behind her and over her and like touching her ass and shit and people were like this is so funny this is so good oh yeah wait i those were the skits that that was the skit in its entirety mm-hmm. i think like it's crazy i do want to talk about it on another podcast episode like when prank culture like shifted <gasps> when like it no longer became i know that sam from the original like british youtube invasion sam wait wait, wait. fuck me british Sam Pepper. Sam Pepper did that prank where, like, he kidnapped his friend. That changed internet yeah. forever. Okay, so what we're talking about is, like, um, prank culture, like, used to be a lot bigger, like, and a lot more violent and dangerous. And then, like, people realized it's super, like, dangerous. Yeah. yeah. Like, Sam Pepper, he did this prank that he thought was harmless where he actually kidnapped his friend and, like, put a bag over his head. And it looked legit. Like, and then I think Sam killed, like, quote-unquote, killed someone else in front of him. And it looked so legit. Like, now his friend is, like, screaming and crying. Traumatized. And then Sam comes out of nowhere and it's like, it's a prank. Like, meanwhile, this guy, he literally believed for, like, a solid couple hours of his life that he had been kidnapped and watched his friend, like, friend die. Yeah. And so, like, and then... For a YouTube video. I know. So, for Sam to just come out and be like, it's a prank, like, expecting the guy to laugh. The guy didn't laugh because, like, that's fucking traumatizing. Yeah. And that is to a level that's like, who is going to watch all of that happen and laugh? Yeah. Oh, my God. Or How like, far removed do you have to be? Yeah. Or, like, the, I think there's, like, Vine pranks where, like, guys would go up behind girls and, like, smack their butt. Yeah. And, like, they thought that was so funny. It's like, you're literally filming it's yourself. It's a joke. It's a joke. Yeah. But that's... So now, like, people became, I was going to say sentient. People became, like, normal people, and they're like, hey, that's weird. Yeah. You can't, like, traumatize someone or sexually assault people yeah. and think it's funny. When you get in this sort of microcosm of the platform of, like, oh, well, this is just the type of stuff that's posted on Instagram back in yeah. the day, on Instagram, on Vine. You know, like, that's just Vine humor. Mm-hmm. No, it's, like, very problematic and yeah. not funny in the slightest. It reminds me of like what's going around on TikTok now where like people listen to their grandparents on how they met and it's like grandpa was <laughs> You were groomed. Th- yeah, grandpa was 35 years old and he, you know, followed me around every single day. I was 15 going to high school and he was working at the lumber yard and everyone's like, "Hey grandma, do you realize that you were groomed?" Yeah. Like it's just like it wasn't vine humor. It was like this is this is objectively bad. Right. Right. And, and now everyone just like realize it because you know we're developing like advancing as a society. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's incredibly wild. It's and again it's gonna be insane in five ten years even to look back at vine mm-hmm. and some of the skits because they're still uploaded. Yeah. To go back and look and be like, Jesus Christ, dude. I know. And I think it's weird. That at the same time that these people were making these skits, if you can even call it that, Mm -hmm. that people like you were existing, people like Jay Cyrus were existing, Mm -hmm. of like genuinely funny people who have the means and the talent and the skill to move to a different platform and do real comedy Mm -hmm. that isn't limited to six seconds. Like these people... That's it. They really struggled to mm-hmm. make long form content. Yeah, I mean, because like you see like their Instagram videos and like how poorly scripted they were. Yeah. That was them using all 17 of their brain cells together yeah. to write something out. And that's why, I mean, physical comedy works really well with children. And that's like they knew that most of their followers were kids. Yeah. However, if I start posting videos of me just falling down, I don't think that my 25 plus audience is going to be like, They'll be like, do you have vertigo or something? Like, what's, what's <laughs> happening? Like, you need to go to the doctor. Yeah. But children are, like, so easily entertained. And they're like, if I fall or make a funny face, hence Lele Pons, mm-hmm. you know, then that's how you get a huge fucking audience. Yeah. Um, collab culture as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. a huge part of mine. Collabing is such a, is such a hard thing to do. Like you have it, you have to have the exact same type of humor or yeah. like style as someone, because like you can tell when people collab if they wouldn't actually be friends in like real life. Yeah, and uh, well, I would say on Vine, ninety five percent of the collabs were that. Yeah, like why the fuck are these people in a video together? I know, like sometimes m- my team will suggest I collab with someone. Me too. And they are a musician, and they have they've never posted a funny video, and I'm like, there is no natural way yeah. for me to integrate into their content. Yeah. 
And so I think that that's, um, you know, collab culture started with them. But I mean, they're all cringy comedians, so maybe it's that's why. all cringe and it was all for views and it was all for, I mean, it's just insane. And, and to think that a lot of them collabed for a brand deal. Yeah. Like for a Badu ad or whatever the fuck else used to sponsor on Vine at the tail end of Vine. Mm-hmm. It's wild. And that bled over into YouTube culture. Yeah. Of like, why is this person and this person in a video together? And the chemistry is so awkward to watch. Yeah. And I think that, thank God, there's not that pressure anymore. Mm -hmm. There is from teams that are like, oh, this has worked in the past. So you need to do this now. Yeah. Which we encounter. But it is. It has. To, you have to be like, dude, if there's no on-screen chemistry. Yeah. I don't want to film it. No. Not only do I not want my audience to watch it, or will they? Yeah. But, like, I don't, you know. Mm -hmm. So. You have to, like, for, I feel like for the best collabs, you genuinely have to be friends mm -hmm. beforehand because everyone can just tell that you're not actually friends. Yeah. But that's the whole thing that, I mean, it feels like we're on different sides of the internet of really caring about the quality of the content. Yeah. And I know that seems counterintuitive to the type of shit we post. I but think it's genuine content. Yes. Yeah, Gen yeah. Authentic, yeah. genuine, whatever. Versus this fabricated, strategically constructed mm -hmm. um, environment. Something like a Logan Paul and Danielle Brigoli making a video together. That actually was... It, have they done that? Yes. Well, Logan Paul did a video with Bad Baby and it was the cringe... It was before she like... Kind of matured a little bit. Oh, dude, wait. That reminds me of the most unnatural duo I've ever seen. What? Cody Ko and Tana Mojo. Dude! <laughs> I, was so, I remember watching that video for the first time and being like, are they even friends? Yeah, I remember watching that and I was like, I don't understand this right now. Yeah. So uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So uncomfortable. Tana and Emma Chamberlain? They? Yeah. Oh, shit. And Tana being like, you're like my little sister. You're my little sister. You're my little mini me. And Emma being like, yeah. Emma was 16. Yeah. That's wild. Oh, I never saw that video. But I know a lot of, like, makeup influencers also did it oh. as well. Like, during, like, the height. You know what? I think that that's a little more forgivable because it's like, oh, ex-redacted beauty influencer doing makeup on Kim Kardashian mm -hmm. or doing makeup on Doja Cat, Zendaya, yeah. whatever, where it's like, okay, they're a makeup artist. Yeah. And if you're going to do their makeup... Or it's a get ready with me or whatever, and you're interviewing them. Yeah. I think that's different than let's just sit down and talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ew. What the fuck are Cody, Cody Cohen's Hannah Mojo? I don't even remember what that video was. Reacting to their old vines or something? I have no idea. But I can only imagine, like, if, can you imagine, like, what would they, t like, if you imagine them in a room at that point in their lives, what would they talk about together? I don't know. I don't understand it. <laughs> I don't know. And then we have the most famous of all Viner. I can't believe I forgot. King Batch. <laughs> King Batch is doing fairly well for himself. Girl, ain't nobody need to worry about King Batch. He was in a Drake music video. He's on Netflix. King Batch, IMDb. He has would not worry about it. Stood the test of time. And what's crazy is that I met him um, at the Shorty Awards, like in 2016. Nice guy, like yeah. really, really nice guy. But um, let's see what he does now. He's an actor. He's been in when we first met for like. He's been in a lot of Netflix stuff. Good for him. Which is crazy. He has a long ass IMDb page. <coughs> What's his real name? His real name is Andrew Bachelor. Slay. That is actually like a really nice like yeah. name. Mm -hmm. I think he's a toss up for me. Like I think he is funny, but I also think he is. I don't know. He's like the in a Venn diagram of like people I respect and don't. Mm. I would find King Batch there. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, where it seems like in a lot of ways he did it right. Yeah. But we don't enjoy his content. Yes. Yeah. Like, I feel like he's, you know when you have, like, different friend groups? Like, I feel like he's the middleman for, like, the popular kids and then, like, a, like a you know, nerdier kids. And, and literal children. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He's our middleman. Yeah. <laughs> yes. If anyone can bridge the gap, it's <laughs> King, King Batch. Batch. <laughs> but, um, so... On January 17, 2017, Vine officially discontinued its service and then relaunched the mobile app under the new name Vine Camera, which allows its users to create 6.5 seconds of looping video. Ooh, half a second more. Mm -hmm, and share them on Twitter or save them as media, uh, media files on the device. Do you remember this? Yeah, I tried using Vine Camera because I was like, I want to still create videos for like Instagram and stuff, but I didn't use it for long. I just started filming them directly on TikTok. 
So then that segues into Byte. Um, so on September 26, 2019, beta testing for the newly renamed Byte was announced. Um, the application works as a spiritual successor to Vine, which is the same six-second loop, looping videos as the primary focus. Yeah, as, <laughs> so Stanley says, at this point, TikTok was in full swing and the rest is not worth mentioning. Basically, Byte flops. Yeah, it flopped bad mm -hmm. and hard. Um, I heard Dominic Hoffman was a dickwad. Really? Yeah, from every person who I knew who worked at Vine. They said mm -hmm. he was a pain in the ass. Was he like a crypto guy? I think he was just a douche. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like maybe those are like, maybe the, maybe he was or One is right same. now. Yeah, yeah. But the other co-founder of Vine, Colin Kroll, he died uh, December 16, 2018 um, mm -hmm. at the age of 34 in his apartment in New York. Um, Kroll's girlfriend requested a wellness check on Kroll from the New York uh, City Police Department who found Kroll's body. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Jesus. I know. Um, he was also the co-creator of online interactive game show HQ. I remember HQ. Dude, everyone in my that old dude? job, yeah, like used to like fucking get together in like the conference room and like try to figure out like was it puzzles? It was a uh, trivia. I yeah. Think. Oh that dude shit. Was hot. Wait, the wait, HQ wait. guy. What happened to HQ? Um, it ran out of funding in 2020. I'm pulling it over. Scott Rogowski. What a solid name. He went to John Hopkins. Um, he is went to the hospital. <laughs> he went to the hospital. I have I what happened to this guy? That should actually be part of HQ trivia. Actually maybe he's kinda scary. <laughs> no, I know he's he is. Oh yeah, so here's an example. What's the most downloaded iPhone app of twenty sixteen? Snapchat, Messenger, or Pokemon Go? Sna oh my god, remember Pokemon Go? Yes, dude. Literally everyone was playing that. One of the most unifying moments in human history. That and nine eleven. That brought t us together as a country. The same way. Um, oh, here's him in 1947. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a time traveler. Yeah. So there's um, a quick rise of Vine. It's speculated that the first, the fast and successful Vine... Uh, oh, my, I'm going to start over. So there was a quick rise to Vine. It's speculated that the fast and successful rise of Vine came from the user interface with the videos looping. It's easy to record and upload, easy to watch, revining. Oh, I, Revine for Revine? Do you remember Dude, that shit? I do remember Revine for Revine. Dude, but I like that's how I got big. Is like I reached out You're to my kidding. yeah. I followed this girl named Lil Goot, and she was so fucking funny. And then I DM'd her. I was like, I really like your stuff. And then she revined some of my um, waitressing vines. And then she, with her fifty thousand followers, blew my shit up. Wow. I literally said, I want to be Vine famous. And a week later, I was Vine famous. Manifestation. I literally like was t like sitting in an accounting final. And I had like my notifications on and I just heard like the dings <gasps> or like all the notifications. And I had like 20,000 fucking notifications oh from Vine. Oh my God. Because the um, done and done, let me pull the table out of my ass picked up. Yeah. And then all, since I ar had already been posting my other uh, waitressing vines. Yeah, there's more to scroll through. Yeah, they all, they, everyone just revine that shit. Yeah. Revining is so fucking like helpful. If you could like read TikTok, like that would you blow. Can. You can. I know. Now you can. Yeah. Yeah. That would help, like, so many people blow up. It's confusing, though, because it's, like, I like my For You page that's catered to me mm -hmm. and, like, my interests and what I what they think I want to see. And so by having someone be, like, you need to see this yeah. or, like, thought this was funny, lol, it's, like, I don't have the same sense of humor as you. You don't respect your friend's sense of humor? Not really. <laughs> if I follow you for something and you're, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. No, I get that. Anyway. So there is there was competition with Vine once the monster that Instagram. Okay, Instagram as an app has stolen literally everything from everywhere. Unabashedly. They stole from Snapchat with stories. They stole from Vine with video and they stole from TikTok, TikTok with reels. With reels. They literally And the shopping tab. Instagram has stolen literally everything. Yeah. And the shopping tab from I guess Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, and the inner well, I mean they're owned by Facebook. I know that, but still, it's yeah. still that's in the final infinity stone gauntlet of I know. Instagram. But like it, it remember when like Instagram used to be like chronological? Mm -hmm. I fucking miss that. That's the only thing I could say really positively about Twitter is that it's the only feed that is chron chronological. Yeah. That's, so that's very true. Mm -hmm. I wonder why they did that. Um Twitter? No, just every app, just kind of randomizing, like... Because cause you could monetize that content. For, like, Twitter, like, text-based content, like, you can't really monetize that. But if someone posts a picture on Instagram and they, like, they want to run an ad, they're going to push it to the top. You know? you can't, Twitter doesn't, like, monetize as well as other 
like image and video based platforms. Yeah. But I, no, I mean, still in like chronological order is what I'm talking about. Oh. Like, what's the point of taking it out of chronological order? To like advertise better and like, yeah, to advertise better. Um, but like she was saying, once the monster that in- is Instagram took the idea of Vine and implemented their own version of Vine into the app, there became competition towards Vine. Mm-hmm. Although the app was accessible, it was limiting. Top Viners began leaving the app for other social platforms um, like Instagram and YouTube. YouTube offered more than Vine could match. And it also, in a lot of ways for so many people, from anyone from Cody Co to Gabby Hanna to whoever the fuck else, provided a, a glimpse into their lives. Mm-hmm. And it, it enabled them to show more range. Yeah. Instead of trying to fit a joke into six seconds. Um, and you know what I, I mean, everyone knows I'm a Cody Co stan, but like, the type of content he was making on Vine, he still makes today. Yeah. And I think that's really admirable. Yeah. Because that's hard to do. Mm-hmm. And to keep it relevant, to keep it still, I, I just overarching, it's his sense of humor. And mm-hmm. I really enjoy that. He hasn't really let himself go. Yeah. Physically and physically comedically. And yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He's kept in shape. But yeah, uh, Stanley also wrote, he would love to do the great migration of Viners to YouTube. And subsequently, TikTokers to YouTube. I would love to do that, too. Viners mm-hmm. to YouTube, it was like everyone moved to fucking YouTube. Every person. Because what do you do? Yeah. Yeah. It was cra- Well, YouTube, in like the social media world, having a YouTube account, like a successful one, is basically like having a savings account. Mm-hmm. Because like a lot of like um, video, you know, sharing apps like come and go, like Vine is going to go. TikTok may fluctuate. Instagram may like come in and out of popularity. But YouTube has consistently been there. Yeah. So if you can grow a successful YouTube channel, you can pretty much make it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would agree. Even, I mean, reaching 100,000 followers is a hard thing to do I on know. YouTube. But in YouTube monetization is so much more like, it, it's so much more than literally any other video platform. Yes. Because you make money off of the views. And while you could make money off of like your Instagram page or your it's TikTok a joke. page. It's a joke. Yeah, the TikTok creator fund is a fucking joke. It's a joke. Instagram uh, monetizing reels, joke. Yeah. You'd have to have an uh, actual sponsorship or a contract with the platform yeah. to make money. Um, but YouTube views, you're just going to make money either way. And It's nice. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, having integrated ads, mm-hmm. nice. Really, really nice. Speaking of monetization, do you want to take it away? Yeah, so Vine as an app was never, um, it wasn't making money. And it was attempting to play the long game at the beginning to make a profit. Poor management from the Vine team created a loss of faith, including the Instagram video launch. uh, And the app was losing money and market share pretty rapidly. It got to a point where Vine stars were requesting money to keep making vines i remember i talked to like the head like creator outreach person at vine and she was talking about how this is like so fucking stupid basically like a group of viners got together and demanded that the platform give them like 1.2 million dollars each or they would leave (laughs) so like peaks is like give me 1.2 million dollars or or i'll leave and i was like that probably like be the best you know if you just fucking want you to leave (laughs) Yeah, yeah yeah and it was just like crazy like how they thought that that was how much they were worth. Yeah. I mean... it It's insane. I mean, at that time. And look where that got them. Yeah. And I don't want to be disrespectful in the sense of, you know, you can look back at those people who were struggling in an industry that was so new. Yeah. And as we are too, but we have a little more of a grasp on it. But it's interesting to look back and have those egos develop for these people yeah so early on vine gave people egos yeah that when vine ended they were it was so embarrassing i know I'm your a- whole career and identity as being a viner yeah for a bit that was me <laughs> i know that but also at the same time you never sold out yeah so that wasn't your career and identity but here's the thing i didn't sell out because everyone on vine there was like this huge stress like not to sell out so i didn't do any ads and i always nope. tell people this it vine died and then i went to the nine to five for three years hated it and now like when i make ads now and people are like oh you sold out yes i fucking yes, did. I, did I would rather do this than literally the place i used to work i would just look out this i would write jokes all day but then i would look out this window and stare at this church and while the church was gorgeous doing that for two years straight yep i like wanted to fucking kill myself yeah 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 i used to work in insurance and at a bank and i was like is this what i have to do for the rest of my life mm-hmm. so when i got fired and when this opportunity came up it's like 
you dive head first. Yeah. Because the alternative is miserable. I know. And that's the average American worker. Like I was trying to mentally prepare myself as a 22 year old of like, this is what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life. And so I get it to a certain extent, but the ego, I don't. Mm -hmm. So that's a wild thing. I don't understand the ego. Cause like, I think about a lot of these people in this like, you know, money, pa like vine packed to like yeah. ask vine for money. Uh, have like, you know, maybe like five to like 20 million followers. You have like six million. It meant, would you go to TikTok as a platform and demand $1.2 million? Never. If you imagine That's going, humiliating. you go to fucking TikTok, you're like, if you don't give me $1.2 million, I will leave. A million dollars. TikTok would be like, I'm gonna. We're gonna miss you. Yeah. But like, why would we do that? Yeah. And to think that that's rational in your brain, you know? Yeah. That is crazy to think about. Also, each there was like twenty of them. I know. And like, they already know that Vine doesn't monetize, and Twitter doesn't give a shit about them. Yeah. Where the fuck would this money come from? Yeah. And what's also interesting is that, you know, these were the top people on the app. Yeah. And we look back, and it was cringe. And I remember cringing at the time. Yeah. At the end of Vine, like. I think it was a pretty natural decline because people were like, I'm graduating high school. Yeah. Like, this isn't hitting the same way as when I was a freshman because mm -hmm. you mature throughout yeah. that time. And they were still making the same sort of content mm -hmm. now just in these huge mansions yeah. that were empty. Uh huh. And they would just go to these. It looked like porn houses. There's something. Yeah. There's something so triggering about like when a, a content creator has like an all white house. Yeah. Like it's not relatable. Yeah. You're like this is too sterile. You yeah. know. It reminds me of a hospital. Like I don't want to watch it. It's not. And it's those big like iron doors and like yeah. really high ceilings. It's echoing. It's just mm -hmm. like this isn't. It's not fun. It's not. I want to see you hope some, it would be. Yeah. Like give me like a like a sea turtle themed you know kitchen yeah give me a live laugh love yeah please show me a, a big spoon and fork in the kitchen that says cocina yeah give me some like dark mahogany cabinets with like dated fixtures yes i want to see the yellow fridge i want to know that your mom is waiting to use the kitchen <laughs> at like every moment you know i want like the horrible down lighting yes and like the church ceilings yeah and you got popcorn ceilings <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you got a white fridge I want to see you like in that space because that's yeah. like I can put myself there. Yeah. I Signs that say I fucking love wine. <laughs> yes. Fuck me. I love coffee <laughs> and I love wine. And Jesus. Right next to that it says it's wine o'clock. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, show me that. Mm -hmm. I want to see that because that's more relatable. We talk about this too. Like it's like sometimes I mean there are YouTube creators that film in studio film in studios and you're like oh I want to watch them. But sometimes like it's just like it's too like, it's too perfect. Yeah. I feel like people like clunky and awkward. Yeah. And, like, horribly lit. And yeah. just it just makes it, like, oh, I, I'm with this person. Right. Yeah. Well, all those comments on TikTok, that's like, I feel like I'm on FaceTime with you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I didn't do that on purpose, but I'm so glad that you feel that way. Yeah. Because I'm just talking. <laughs> yes. I'm just talking to my camera. And I hope that it lands. Dude, I tell so many people, like, I go on TikTok Live to tell sex stories. Like, the most foul stuff. And like that you'll ever hear. Yeah, and my most com my most commented thing is like it feels like we're on FaceTime. Yeah, you know, and so that's that's really nice. I that love too. that. Mm -hmm. So I think it needs to be said that although the app is gone, it definitely was not a failure. It yeah, if you would agree. Um, and it still continues to have a lasting impact on the internet and on pop culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, to this day, incredibly unfunny people still reference vines. Mm -hmm. I would say I they never grew out of it. I know, but in five years, we're going to like. Uh, ironically, ironically mention Vines in oh. full sincerity. I'm going into my full <laughs> millennial era in yes. about two years. Yeah. I'm going to zoom in on my face. I'm going to say, oh, so that just happened. Yeah. I'm going to talk about my <laughs> Harry Potter house. I'm going to eat avocado toast. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking re what the fuck is up, Kyle? Yeah, I'm gonna fully lean into it. You're gonna like pretend to like take a sip of coffee before you start <laughs> filming, but before we get into it, or like do that thing where you put like a uh, you know your hand underneath your chin and you're just like, hmm. yeah, one of these. Yeah, start scratching your chin. Yeah, like pulling at your fake beard hair. Let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> is anyone else gonna talk about? And it's like, oh my god, shut up. <laughs> Oh, or, it's so awful. I was today years old when I learned. <laughs> hey, mood for the day. <laughs> yes. Mood when pizza? <laughs> I'd be like, when bay is fam? When pizza is butt? <laughs> <laughs> when shit is ass? No, actually, speaking of pizza butt, I started working out again, and I'm starting yeah. to get little zitties on my butt. 
Why does that happen? Because I think it's like the the material traps the sweat, and then you just like have to exfoliate a bunch. But yeah, and when all the poop is back there, it just like irritates it. Poop on my butt <laughs> <laughs> while I'm working. You're out. just sharding in the fucking <laughs> uh, gym in our apartment complex. Yes. You know what was I gonna say? Is Are you talking about your butt pimples? Yeah, butt pimples. And right Pimple. as right as Pride starts. Oh, dude, having sex with butt pimples is so sad. It's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> you ever had like really bad razor burn and then like yes. had sex? Every time I it literally gets to a point where it's painful and unenjoyable. Oh, yes. One time, actually, I don't know. If I want, I'll tell it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like when you shave your whole gooch. Yeah. And it starts to grow back like a little porcupine. Yeah. <laughs> One time I was doing the nasty and he literally was like, it's irritating my yeah. skin. Oh my God, yes. And I was like, well, what the fuck do you want me to do? <laughs> Imagine how I feel. And he, we had to put like a t-shirt in between us. <laughs> It, it like was some like Mormons. Li- literally like a cloth around. <laughs> yes. I was like, this is awful. Uh huh. I was, yeah, I've, I've definitely dry humped someone right after shaving and they, they gave me razor burn the next day. I have, this is what sucks. Okay. So you know how you can get like beard burn from yeah. kissing the guy? I thought, you know, I wouldn't get that much anymore. You can, sorry, like eat right. pussy that's like shaved and it, like, I've literally burned the tip of my nose. And broken your nose. Yes. I literally, I, I touch my nose now and it fucking hurts so much. But I'm not going to think about that. You got, I didn't even think about that. You went to the doctor a couple days ago. Mm-hmm. But it still hurts. It feels like it's stuck in my face. I hurt my nose eating pussy, would you believe? Um, don't let anyone sit on your face super, super hard. It will fucking hurt. Um, I, it literally feels like my nose is stuck in my face. I wanted the doctor to just grab it and pull it out. Got your nose. <laughs> <laughs> Puts it in his pocket. Give it back. <laughs> Got your nose. <laughs> yes. Ooh, this is not related to um, a razor burn. I used to have my hips pierced. Um, <laughs> That's so slay. I know. It was so cute. And then I was humping this dude who had jeans on, and both of them hooked on his jeans oh. and pulled out at the same time. I oh, know. that's going to make me – that gave me a chill. It was so – because, um, cause like, a dermal is, like, an anchor. So, like, it's literally like this. So oh, they, stop. Oh. And I got two little scars. Ow. And anytime anyone's down there, they always ask about it. Who hooked you from the front? <laughs> <laughs> Where are these meat hooks? <laughs> <Yes. laughs> well, it's like, you know, like how people come up to you and ask about your tattoos and, like, what it means? Yeah. Everyone's like, where'd you get these scars? <laughs> <laughs> you want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> so, you know, I got, like, stretch marks, dark inner thighs, white nipples, and, <laughs> and dermal scars. <laughs> And there's so many like questions you could ask when you're hooking up with me. This is another episode of Sarah is a medical anomaly. <laughs> yes. Wait, no, but speaking of um, irritating, I was the first time I hooked up with you a- pointing at me. Speaking <laughs> of irritating, <laughs> no, speak- speaking of irritated skin, uh, the first time I hooked up with a girl, I had um, shaved my um, rabbit trail, bunny trail. Is it a bunny What's trail? What's it called? Um, happy trail. Happy trail. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it smell like carrots? I shaved my goat trail. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, um, and I was humping a girl and she was like, why is your stomach prickly? And I was like, oh. Why are people doing sex so, Dude, like, it- it's so, they know what they're asking. Why is your <laughs> stomach fat resting on my, oh my God. Just don't say it. Just say, hey, let's move positions. Yeah, you don't need to. Oh, my gosh. I'm, like, so aware, like, during sex, like, to not ask people, like, what could potentially be, like, a lifelong insecurity. Yeah. Yes, triggering. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you have a mole on your back that looks like, hey, Arnold. You don't say that in the midst of sex. You, you- wait until it's over. <laughs> <laughs> you wait until the deep. <laughs> yes. You don't start calling them Helga in bed. Like, that's awful. Yeah, but I've had people point out so many weird things about my body during sex. I have people point out weird things about my body on TikTok. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't even get that luxury yeah, of being, being intimate. intimate with someone. <laughs> yes, that, just Joe Smith being like, God damn, you're really weird looking. Yes. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Thanks for the follow back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Lifelong follower. Been yeah. following since 2019. <laughs> I grew up watching you. <laughs> You're really weird looking. <laughs> Your moles look like a constellation. 
Aww. It's right. fine. I have the thickest skin. <laughs> like literally? B- literally and metaphorically. <laughs> and try to draw blood. I dare yeah. you. You can bite three inches into my arm right <laughs> yes. now and it's just dope. Yes. <laughs> like Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> Try to find a vein. You yeah, can't. You can't. I'm a nurse's worst fucking nightmare. Can you? Okay, so I was looking at my boobs earlier. You have veins on your boobs. Like, yeah. if they can't find a vein in your arm, can they go straight through your boob? Would that I mean, hurt? I wouldn't. <laughs> Would that hurt, though? Probably. Oh. <laughs> that skin is so thin. No, p- pinch the underside of your boob. You can't feel it. You can't feel it. Okay, everyone at home right now, I want you to do something for me. Pinch the underside of your boob. You can't feel it, right? Right? Do it, Brittany. Pinch the underside of your boob. I mean, it hurts. No. I'm pinching my skin. Right here. You what? can't. So that skin is this thick. <laughs> <laughs> it goes into your rib cage. Yes. I don't even have mammary glands. It's just an inch of skin. It's just dermis. <laughs> yes. Dermal dermis. All right, but you guys are going to try that at home and tell me in the comments, you know? All right, I just touched my. All yeah. right. But, um,. Do I have any other body anomalies updates? I've got <laughs> some, uh, uh, I had a mole removed on my shoulder. Oh, yeah, yesterday. Yeah. How'd, how'd that go? Did you get to keep it? No. They sent it to the pathology lab to see if it's cancerous. Oh, wah, wah. It, wah, wah. Um, they, the, the way they do it, trigger warning if you don't like skin stuff. I'm not showing it, actually. <laughs> so just grow <laughs> yes. up. Um, they have such vivid memories. That, yeah. Or, like, yeah, imaginations. Yes. Like, sorry. Um. He described it like a hole punch. Uh huh. And it's to, like, it literally removes the mole and all the tissue under it uh-huh. all in one go. It's yeah. actually really cool. Uh huh. And then he just sewed me up. Oh my god. And gosh. I was like, period. We were done in four minutes. Uh huh. Because he was like, we're going to have to do a surgery. And I said, now what the fuck does that mean? Did you get anesthesia? Yeah. That's the most painful part. Yeah. Because they stick that needle this thick and they stick it in you. And it, what burns is the Novocaine. Yeah. Like, it, the needle puncture hurts but it's not that bad it's when they actually inject it and that numbs it but after it's numb you can't feel a single thing Mm -hmm. i mean he was like rubber band slapping on my (laughs) shoulder he said can you feel that i said not a single thing it's nice (laughs) he's smacking you on the back (laughs) like like leaving like handprints (laughs) he's playing the drums on my back russian slap box (laughs) yeah just beating the fuck out of me i um i the last time i had uh, myself numbed is for my uh, mm. wisdom teeth but what sucks is that they didn't let me fall asleep so they just uh, like made it numb and I could hear the crunching and the oh, ripping out dude. and it was like come it, on dude it was in my skull so I could like hear it oh, so fucking well come on dude I know I was like can someone fucking punch me oh knock me out please someone knock me out knock me out <laughs> Be a man. Hit me. Does anyone have a pan? Yeah. <laughs> or or a, com- a comedically large pan or baseball bat? Yes. <laughs> Knock me out. A bed pan. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't have dental insurance. I mean, even if I did, it wouldn't matter. They wouldn't pay yeah. for shit. No, period. Yeah. Dental insurance be like, <laughs> <laughs> will you pay for this? No. <laughs> <laughs> Dental insurance has never paid for anything. No. I paid, when I worked in my bank job, I paid 75 bucks a month for dental insurance, and I went in to have my wisdom teeth done, and they said, we're not going to cover any of it. <laughs> yes. Um, my dentist get, uh, offhanded suggested I get braces. And she's like, it's <laughs> Adult two- braces? Yeah, and she's like, it's $2,000 that you'd have to pay up front. And I was like, I... I don't want them. Do I need them? And she's like, you're tooth shifted on this side. And I was like, tooth shifting is like so serious because it's a fucking tooth. I'd have to like get this like medically fixed. Like there's a hole right here. I can't even tell. I don't know. I just, my right side is not my good side anymore. That To get full braces for that though? I think it's like the first round of Jesus braces. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And why not like Invisalign? I feel like Invisalign yellows really quickly. Mm. Mm-hmm. Both of my siblings had it, and their teeth are so straight. Mm-hmm. I used to have braces. Really? I had that crank thing at the top of your mouth. My mouth. Ah! Ooh, one time I remember in California, we had this like my first ever, I think, co-ed sleepover. Um, this lady uh, set up your two. Cousin. <laughs> cousin no it was this lady who used to like run our daycare um she like invited over like boys and girls and she set up the boys tent and the girls tent and um 
uh, in the middle of the, I remember I had to go to the bathroom to like crank my mouth. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I walked back out and the boys were like making a ruckus and their tent collapsed and they all went screaming and running inside. And then she came out and she was pissed at like all these like boys. And then uh, the girl's tent was like giggling. And so she steps it. This, I re- oh my God, this is going to be abusive. <laughs> <laughs> she like puts her arm and a belt in the tent door and starts swinging it around. And uh, children that weren't hers. Um, Holy shit! And then she steps. This is a church. Uh, no, it, I don't think it was church. I was like, like daycare. But oh. then she steps into the tent, and the girl closest to the opening, named Angel. Her. <laughs> no, her name was Angel. Um, she steps on Angel, and um, Angel's just like, oh. and we're like, oh, Angel, no, <laughs> Angel, no, Angel, no. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, Angel was the first person to show me porn. She came to school one day with, she's like, I found something in my parents' closet. And I was like, what is it? And then she came the next day with it. And it was just like intense porn. Nudie mag. No, it was like the DVDs or like VHSs. Oh. Yeah. Angel, I think she was fine after that. Angel, we're thinking about you today. <laughs> <laughs> Angel, we're wishing you well today. Well, yeah, that's enough of me. <laughs> anyway, back to Vine. Uh, Brent Rivera loves his sister a little too much. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah, I think Brent Rivera. And, I don't know. They should be Brent like. Brent Rivera is that meme that's like, when you wake up late for school and you have. To do... Brent, you're thirty. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Yeah. Wait, what does he look like again? He's like a brunette. Yeah. Brent. Got a punchable face. Rivera. He is. Oh yeah. Yeah, he definitely does have a punchable face. Yeah. And to finish the episode, I need to play this. No, no. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you guys for watching. And listening. You can mostly find listening. Us, mostly listening. And also. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. This has been Violating Community, Community Guidelines. Guidelines. Featuring Brittany Broski, Sarah Shower, mm. internet uh, comedian legends. Real life cousins. And real life related Blood cousins. Blood people. <laughs> Be sure to like and subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on YouTube and TikTok. We post clips. Mm-hmm. You can follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Spotify. Podcasts, Google, wherever you li- get your podcasts. Anywhere you get your podcasts. Freaking weirdos. Make sure to rate and review because it's Pride Month. And if you don't, I will be forced to show up to yeah, your house and everyone, beat the shit out of you. Please, everyone leave a comment and tell Sarah that they're beautiful. Because it's Pride Month. And if you don't, you're homophobic. <laughs> Um, okay guys, we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>